did you know that the way that you're trying to improve your bone health might actually be making things worse? Don't worry, I've made these mistakes too, but today I'm gonna to show you how to avoid them and to take the right steps to build stronger bones. Bone health is one of those things that's easy to take for granted until it's not. That's why today I'm diving into three of the most common big mistakes that people make when trying to improve osteoporosis and more importantly, how to avoid them. Whether you're just starting your journey to better bone health or you're looking to refine your current approach, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and a 500 hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. I'm also a BoneFit certified fitness instructor. My mission is simple but powerful. I wanna help reduce the number of osteoporotic fractures that happen each year and empower you to build stronger and healthier bones. So let's dive into our topic today and talk about mistake number one. Mistake number one is not getting the right nutrition. It's incredibly easy to have nutritional gaps that we are unaware of. I've personally been there, and if I'm not careful, I can still end up there. For years, I had a major vitamin D deficiency without having any idea. Growing up, I was taught how important it was to eat healthy food. And when I moved into adulthood, I stayed away from supplements because I wanted to get my nutrients from whole food sources. As a young adult, I lived in California and I went for regular walks. And when my children were little, we actually spent a lot of time playing at the park. I thought that I was getting enough vitamin D and I remember feeling absolutely stunned when my doctor finally tested my vitamin D and I realized how low I was. And by low, I mean really low, like a 9.2. The human body can't properly absorb calcium with a vitamin D level like that. Without enough vitamin D, the calcium that we consume largely passes through the digestive system unused our bodies need to have at least 30 nanomoles per liter to properly absorb calcium. And your vitamin D levels should ideally be more like between 50 and 75 for stronger bones. For me, this meant that my bones were in real trouble, but it was completely silent and I was totally unaware of it until my doctor checked it. At the time, I was also a bit too young and dumb to have asked my doctor to check it out. It had never occurred to me that there was anything to be concerned about. Now, more than a decade later, I'm careful about what I eat. One of my children has a life-threatening food allergy and I basically cook everything from scratch. It's easy to think that I'm doing a good job with nutrition and food because I cook everything from scratch but periodically when I track the food that I've eaten throughout the day and I look at the nutrients that I've consumed, sometimes I'm surprised to realize that I have a nutritional gap for the day that I didn't realize was there. I encourage you to try out tracking the foods and the nutrients that you eat. It can be incredibly insightful and sometimes in scary ways, but it's always worth knowing that we have nutritional gaps because becoming aware of the gaps gives you the power to fix them. I believe it's best to get as many of the nutrients from whole food sources as we can. But if there are regular gaps like my massive vitamin D deficiency, then it is way better to supplement than to have a gap like that. Please learn from my mistake and try out some food tracking and learn more about your own nutrition to make sure that you don't have a gap like I did. Try a food tracking app like MyFitnessPal or Chronometer to see if you have any nutritional gaps. It's not just insightful, it's empowering. Knowing what your body is missing gives you the ability to fix it. Your body needs the right tools to rebuild strong and resilient bones. 
Tracking your nutrition can help you to identify and fill gaps, whether it's through food or supplements. For example, if you discover a vitamin D deficiency like I did, supplementation may be necessary to avoid issues like poor calcium absorption. And remember, vitamin D levels should ideally be between 50 and 75 to support strong bones. Are yours where they need to be? So have you ever tracked your nutrition? If you have, what surprised you the most? If you're comfortable, I'd love for you to share your experience in the comments. Let's learn from each other and keep building stronger bones together. Okay, let's talk about mistake number two. Mistake number two is doing the wrong exercises or none at all. Figuring out the right exercise for your body can feel overwhelming because not all exercises are appropriate for everyone. But there's one thing that's true for all of us, and that's that we need weight-bearing exercise. Weight-bearing exercise is essential for maintaining bone health and our muscle health. So what counts as weight-bearing exercise? One way is lifting weights. This could mean heavy weights at the gym, hand weights at home, or even reusing a resistance band. You can also use your own body weight. Exercises from yoga or Pilates that have been specifically designed for osteoporosis are also good options here. So why is weight-bearing exercise so important for osteoporosis? After age 30, we start to gradually lose between three and 5% of our muscle mass each year. At about age 30 is also when we hit our peak bone mass. Muscles and bones walk hand in hand together. You could even think of them a bit like the alphabet letters Q and U. When there is a Q, there's also a U. In our bodies where there's bone, there are also muscles. In the world of bone health, we often hear about how important it is to do weight-bearing exercise, and it's not uncommon to hear experts talk about the importance of lifting heavy in order to reverse osteoporosis. So let's talk about that for a moment. Lifting heavy is great for many people, and it is the fastest way to get results for improving bone density. But lifting heavy is also not great for a whole bunch of other people. Here's what I mean by that. You see, I have rheumatoid arthritis and I have regular swelling in my hands. The pointer finger on my right hand gives me some amount of trouble every single day. It can be really difficult for me to grip heavy weights. Often when I lift weights, I kind of leave my right pointer finger hanging off of the edge. That works for me most of the time. But take a moment and imagine me at the gym trying to lift heavy. Depending on the day, I could easily drop the weight, even if I'd lifted the same amount of weight just a few days before because of the irregular swelling that happens in my hands. I can't plan when I'm gonna have a good day and when I have a bad day with my hands. This doesn't make lifting heavy a great option for me because of the arthritis that's ongoing in my hands. There are days when my hands function better, and on those days, those are the days that I work at lifting weights. But I also have quite a few days when that just isn't gonna work for me. So what do you do if you can't lift heavy? This is where many people find a low impact type of exercise like swimming or cycling on a stationary bike. These exercises can feel relaxing and even soothing to aching joints like mine but it's important to know that they don't provide the weight bearing that our bones and our muscles need. On days that my fingers are not particularly cooperative, I use my own body weight instead of lifting weights. Using your own body weight is still a form of weight bearing exercise, and it's one that's often more accessible in my body. It might be in yours too. Let's look at planking as an example. Planks can be done in so many different ways. You can do a full plank down on the ground with your hands underneath your shoulders and your toes tucked under. In this particular type of plank, in all planks really, you'll find that you're loading your body weight into your arms, your shoulders, and you're using your core to keep yourself steady. You could also choose to drop your knees and do a knee plank. There are also forearm plank varieties. 
And you could even do a forearm plank down on your knees or in full forearm plank style. Planks can be done at the wall, either on forearms or on hands. And you can even plank against your kitchen counter, which is a great option if balance is something that you struggle with or is something that you're working on. There are so many different ways to plank that there's likely one that's going to be accessible for you in your body. I think the real key is finding a way to make exercise work in your body. It doesn't all have to fit into a particular mold or way of doing things. The best type of exercise for you is the one that works in your body and that you will do consistently. We would all like to see improvement in our bone health and reversing osteoporosis is a great goal. It doesn't mean that all is lost if we can't lift heavy. It just means that we need to find a way to make weight bearing work in our bodies. It might take more time than lifting heavy, but it's still worth doing. Lasting strength is built gradually over time. Whether you use your own body weight or add extra weight, small, large, or anything in between. Exercises for osteoporosis are about so much more than just reversing it. Exercise for osteoporosis is intended to improve balance, increase flexibility, and build strength. All of this is intended to reduce your fracture risk while also improving bone quality over time. The real mistake comes from giving up. Don't give up, keep going. If you have a day, a week, a month, or even several months without weight bearing exercise, it's okay to start again. Start again as many times as necessary until it becomes a habit and you do it consistently. Build strength, increase your flexibility, and improve your balance. It's worth it and you will see improvement in your bone health. Weight-bearing exercise in any form is worth the effort. It might take more time if you're not lifting heavy, but it's still effective and your bones will thank you for it. So what's your favorite type of weight-bearing exercise? Share it in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Okay, let's talk about the third mistake. Mistake number three is flying solo on your bone health journey. Bone health isn't a one person job, it's a team effort. And one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is not coordinating everything that you're doing with your healthcare team. Here's an example that I see often. A client comes to me with a list of supplements that they're taking. One of the supplements is recommended by the doctor, another by a friend, and a third one possibly from something that they've read online. Individually, each of these supplements might be fine, even good for the body, but without coordination, things can go off track and quickly. That person might end up taking too much of one nutrient, missing another altogether, or taking a supplement that interferes with some of their medication that they need to take. So continuing with this example, when I ask if their doctor knows about all the supplements that they're taking, the answer is often no. This lack of communication creates gaps and confusion that can affect progress. Bone health requires balance, not just in your nutrition, but across your entire care plan. Your care team includes your doctor, your physical therapist, and a health coach if you're working with one. Each of these parties need to work together to provide a clear and unified strategy for you. If needed, encourage them to communicate directly or share information through you. Think of it like this. If everyone is rowing in different directions, you won't get very far. But when everyone starts rowing together, then you make steady progress towards better bone health. Advocating for yourself can feel awkward, but it's essential. I work with clients who both take medication for bone health and others who don't. Often when someone decides against taking medication, they stop going to their doctor or they avoid discussing their preferences with their doctor. This leads to missed opportunities for support and for care. If you feel uncomfortable talking to your doctor, then it might be time to find another physician who better aligns with your values. Look for a doctor who respects your thoughts, listens to your concerns, and is willing to partner with you. 
This might take effort. Navigating insurance options and local resources can be challenging, especially depending on where you live. But finding the right doctor can make a world of difference in your care. If that's not an option, then be clear and proactive about communicating your health goals with your current doctor. Teamwork builds stronger bones. Your care team is meant to work together, but you're the captain of that team. By coordinating supplements, exercise plans, and medical treatments, then you create the best possible path forward for your bone health. So here's a quick tip. The next time that you visit your doctor or physical therapist, bring a list of everything that you're doing. This includes supplements, exercises, dietary changes, and ask for feedback about what you're doing. It's a simple step that ensures that everyone is on the same page. So to recap, the three big mistakes are not getting the right nutrition, not exercising consistently, and not coordinating with your healthcare team. Focus on these and you're well on your way to having stronger and healthier bones. The journey to better bone health is filled with opportunities for growth and improvement. And the good news is that you don't have to be perfect to make progress. Whether it's getting the right nutrition, finding exercise that works for your body, or building a care team that you trust, every step forward counts. If you found this video helpful, please share it with someone that you love and care about. Together we can spread the message and help more people to take control of their bone health. Improving your bone health is a journey, it's not a race. So let's build strength and confidence together. I invite you to join our community by subscribing. Let's keep growing together. Thank you for being here with me on this journey to better bone health. I am so glad that we're in this together and I look forward to talking with you soon.